Hello everyone, I'm Yu Hong. Today I'm going to talk about our work, BPF for Storage, an exokernel inspired approach. This is a joint work with Hong Yi, Yu Jian, Asaf, Ryan, Amy, and Junfeng. With new technology like Xenon SSD and 3D Crosspoint, storage devices are getting much faster. Intel Optin SSD Gen 2 can achieve 5 microsecond latency and 7 GB per second bandwidth. For HDD and old SSD, the hardware latency dominates the total access latency. However, as the devices are getting much faster, the software overhead of the I.O. request becomes more significant. For example, the storage software stack accounts for around 15% of the I.O. latency on the first generation of Intel Optin SSD. And for the second generation of Optin SSD, the software overhead is around 50% of the access latency. There are two major ways to reduce kernel overhead. One is kernel bypass. Kernel bypass frameworks allows the application to directly talk with the device without going through the kernel storage stack. However, it does not provide fine-grained isolation, and it also wastes the CPU cycle due to PC pooling for completion. An another alternative approach is to use near storage processing, which allows the user to download application logic into the storage device, but it requires specialized hardware. Our goal is to provide a standard OS-supported mechanism in Linux that can reduce the software overhead. We are inspired by the exokernel file system, which is an old idea from the late 90s. Exokernel support user-defined kernel extension. This extension gives the kernel user-defined understanding of the file system metadata. Similarly, we can download the application logic deep into the kernel storage stack, so that each I.O. request does not need to go through the entire storage stack. I will use a B-tree lookup as an example to show you later. But now the question is, how to run untrusted application logic in the kernel? We turn to the networking community, where high-performance devices are common. We find that Linux eBPF is widely used for efficient packet processing, filtering, security, and tracing. eBPF is an acronym for Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. Initially, it was only used to filter network packets, and then it is extended to support more use cases. We call eBPF interchangeably with BPF for the rest of the presentation. BPF allows users to run untrusted function in the kernel safely using a just-in-time compiler. Therefore, BPF could be used to chain dependent I.O. requests, eliminating the traversal of the kernel storage stack and transition between user space and kernel space. For example, it can be used to perform B-tree index lookup, which we will be focused on for the rest of the presentation. To perform the B-tree lookup on an all-disk B-tree, we start at the root node. After doing a binary search within the root node, we can retrieve the offset of the next node. Normally, in order to read the next node into memory, we need to use the read syscall to submit the I.O. request. The request will go through the entire kernel storage stack and come back to the application. After receiving the data of the next node, we can do the binary search again to find the offset of the next node in the user space. Then, we need to call the read syscall again to retrieve the data of the next node. The I.O. request needs to go through the entire software stack again. After the request is completed, we find that we are already at the leaf node, which means that we reach the end of the B-tree lookup. Instead, if we can download the application logic into the kernel as a BPF function, we can reduce the software overhead significantly. First, we start at the root node, do the binary search to find the offset of the next node. Then, the application submits a special I.O. request. The request will first go through the entire submission path and reach the NVMe device. After the request is completed, an interrupt will be generated, and the interrupt handler of the NVMe driver will be invoked to handle the completion. And here, we already have the data of the node we need. So instead of doing the binary search in the user space, we can invoke BBI function here to run the binary search and get the offset of the next node. After retrieving the offset, we can immediately resubmit the request to the device, instead of letting the application to submit another request from the user space. After the new request is completed, we run the BPF function again, and we find that we already reached the leaf node. Therefore, we can complete this request and return the data back to the user space. With normal lookup, we will generate the read request, where D is the depth of the tree. And with BPF, we only need to generate one read request and D minus one BPF lookup that bypass the kernel. If the tree depth is large enough, we will get better performance. 
This graph shows the dispatch path of submitting I.O. requests from the user space. To reduce the overhead of traversing the kernel storage stack, we can dispatch the next request within the syscall function. This approach only eliminates the kernel boundary crossing, but it allows us to keep all the file system and block layer functionalities. At the other extreme, we can resubmit the next request in the NVMe driver, which almost eliminates all of the software overhead. However, the NVMe driver is a lack of file system and block layer semantics. To learn about the potential benefit of downloading application logic into the kernel using BPI function, we break down the average 512 byte read latency using Intel Optin SSD Gen 2. The result shows that by just eliminating the kernel boundary crossing can help eliminate 5.6% of the latency. If we can resubmit the next request in the NVMe driver, we can reduce almost half of the latency. Then, we simulate B-tree lookup with different B-tree levels. This graph shows the IOPS improvement of dispatching the next request in the, uh, in the syscall layer with different B-tree depths and thread counts. The x-axis is the length of the I.O. chain, and the y-axis is the speed that we get by dispatching the next request within the kernel. Here, we use a mem copy in the BPF function to simulate B-tree node parsing. We see that we can achieve 1.25 speed up when the B-tree depth is deep enough. We also run the experiment in which we dispatch the new request within the NVMe driver. Unsurprisingly, we can achieve larger speed up compared to dispatching from the syscall layer. The speed up is more significant when the number of threads exceed the number of CPU cores. This is because their baseline is bottleneck and CPU, while we can reduce the CPU overhead. The maximum speed up we can achieve is 2.5 in this case. We also examine the latency of dispatching from different layers. The x-axis shows the length of I.O. chain, and the y-axis shows the latency of the entire lookup. Compared to dispatching from the user space, dispatching from the Cisco layer allows us to reduce the latency by 13%. As expected, dispatching from the NVMe driver gives us higher latency reduction, which is around 49%. Our observation is that calling BPF function as early in the storage I.O. completion path as possible can maximize the performance gain. Another interesting question is, can BPF help I.O. Uring? I.O. Uring is a new syscall that allows application to submit batches of asynchronous I.O. requests in a zero-copy way and to collect batches of I.O. completions. It is a more optimized I.O. syscall compared to read. However, requests sent with IOU ring still pass through all the kernel layers. Therefore, by reducing the number of kernel layers each request needs to traverse, we can achieve higher IOP speedup by reissuing new requests in the NVMe driver. This graph shows the speedup with different batch size and B tree depths. The X axis is again the length of the IO chain, and the Y axis shows the speedup we get by using BPF. The baseline here is issuing requests using IOU ring with the same batch size and without using BPF. The maximum speed up we can achieve is 2.7. Even for a 3 level B tree, we can get IO speed up around 1.3 to 1.9. It is worth mentioning that our approach is complementary to IOU ring. Here we present a brief design for the storage BPF. We plan to build a library that provides a higher level interface than BPF and new BPF hooks in the NVMe driver completion path. The BPF function will be triggered in the NVMe driver interrupt handler on each I.O. completion. Those BPF functions could be used to extract file offsets from the block fetched from the storage and immediately reissue an I.O. to those offsets. Or they can be used to filter, project, and aggregate block data by building up buffers that are later returned to the application. However, there are several challenges to implement this idea. First, MEM driver lacks the file system semantics, such as extend translation and access control, but those information is crucial to provide the isolation guarantee. Second, a single I.O. request might require multiple NVMe commands to finish, because the data might be physically non-contiguous. Third, since the NVMe driver bypassed the page cache, the application needs to implement its own caching mechanism. Also, applications usually need to use log to synchronize read and write operation, but acquiring a log within the interrupt handler can be prohibitive. Finally, since Linux implements IR scheduling in the block layer, the NVMe driver does not provide any fairness or quality of service guarantee. Thanks.